anyone from the live chat to jump in here. And uh, the offer still stands. If you are listening to the show, if you're watching the show, uh, put a hand emoji in the chat and we will send you a Zoom link. But right now we're talking to uh, the DMT shaman, the guru man himself. This guy is very cool. He's been following my show for a while uh, he always comments on the YouTube page. And uh, for the first time ever, we are talking with uh, Three I I Eyes. What's up, Three I I I Eyes? Yo, what's up, bro? It's such a pleasure to be on here. Thank you so much. Oh, shit, um, dude. Super anonymous. You don't have to turn your video on if you want to remain anonymous. I respect the anonymity with what you might be about to talk about. But if you want to turn your video on, go for it. Um, Anyways, how's you how how you been? How how's it going? I'm doing pretty good, bro. Just uh kicking it, enjoying life, you know? Just existing in God's creation. Right on. Well, you're how, sort of you uh, I'm great. As you can tell from watching the live stream, we just talked to Ryan Burns. So I'm good. Uh you you're sort of prolific in the YouTube comments. You you're always very uh, adamant about psychedelics, so you know, we got to get right down to the the meat and potatoes here, brother. Like, what's your what's your deal? Are you like a, a shaman? Are you just a user? Are you just an experiencer, a psychonaut? Like, how would you describe yourself? Yes, sir, uh, thank you so much. Um, I would describe myself as a psychonaut personally, just because I enjoy these psychedelics and I understand their power that they're able to like help you transcend this dimension. So. It's like literally like an astronaut, you're leaving Earth to go into outer space. But like with psychedelics, you're leaving your body to go off into like different dimensions. Damn. So you, you might have listened to our previous conversation with Matt Reed. He told us some pretty incredible stories of his journeys through other dimensions with the help of psychedelics. What were your experiences like? Anything worth writing a book about do you remember any of them is it more like ephemeral like you just kind of experience it and then it's gone like how much of those experiences have been integrated into your your mind your life yo that's a great question um honestly it's like every day i uh doing psychedelics has been like the most traumatic in a good way like the most traumatic thing ever it's like winning the lottery you know like i honestly feel like I've unlocked the key to the universe by doing psychedelics because um, before psychedelics, I was focused on the material world and just trying to accumulate the most just stuff, you know, mm. and some psychedelics. What's what became apparent to me is that our consciousness is at the forefront of everything. Mm. And it's not about like a, like earth really matters, you know, because we're here right now. But what matters is, is the journey that the soul is on and, trying to fulfill your purpose while you're here on earth with the time that you've been given. Right. Dude, that right there, boom, look at my mans right here. Not only gets it, you can <laughs> say it in a fucking one sentence. Dude, mic drop yourself, dude. My man, thank you. I'm going to get a beer. You just did it. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I forgot to get a beer for this episode too. When Chris gets back, I'm going to get up and get a beer because we can't leave one uh, hanging here. But yeah, man, well said. I, I would uh, just ask to clarify um, do you, did you mean you do psychedelics every day or did you mean that every day you, you walk with that wisdom you've gained from psychedelics? I, I wasn't sure. Yes, sir. Every day I try to walk with that wisdom. So I try okay. to remember my trips that I've been on and, uh, I don't take it lightly. Like some people think that it's just like you're hallucinating or whatever, but these experiences have been so visceral and like, they've like changed my life, you know? It's like there's no way it could possibly be just a hallucination. So I've like I've spoken to entities. I've left my body. I feel like I've met God. Um, I've seen like the DMT elves, you know, I've I've gone to like different different layers and different uh different like what they call different dimensions. I don't know. It's just like what I think it is is that our brain is vibrating right now. Uh, Earth is like a specific frequency that we're on. And whenever you do psychedelics, you're able to like tune your brain to a different frequency. It's kind of like a radio. Hmm. Um, and yeah, I've, I've, um, the reason I hold psychedelics so like in such a high regard is because I've tried meditation 
and it's pretty cool, but I just understand that it takes years to, or like a really long time, actually, like a lot of discipline and a really long time to, to like get these mystical experiences. But with psychedelics, um, if you take the right dose and the right amount, then you're almost guaranteed like a mystical out of body experience. Mm. Right on. Well, we got Rob, my man Rob in the chat, someone who uh who pays me to work with him. He's a cool guy. He's uh independent worker, someone who uh, owns his own business, makes his own way. Uh all around good dude. He's he's here. He's just going to tune in. I don't know. Rob, do you want to you you have anything to add, brother? What's going on in your world? Is my mic on? It's working. All right. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I, was, I was digging that dude that you guys just had on. He was hitting some good points, man. Right on. The first, the first cat. I forgot his name. I wasn't really paying attention. Well, we still got the second cat here, and now you're the third cat. So, uh, <laughs> But, yeah, cat number two, who goes by three, triple I, um, I, would, I would ask this to you, my friend. What do you think? about you know chris's situation out there in oregon being in like a totally legal state i imagine you're someone who would probably be all for that kind of thing uh being like you know decriminalize everything do you think that if we decriminalize psychedelics it will lead to uh, some kind of change in in society um oh my bad i didn't know if you were talking to me but uh yes sir so I believe the change honestly starts with ourselves. So uh, my example is that there's people that use psychedelics and go to raves and they have like a, an amazing time, you know, and they're just like surface level with the psychedelics pretty much their whole life. Um, I feel like if, if people were to have these out of body experiences on psychedelics, then it definitely would change a lot of people's lives. Mm. That's like the main point. Um, So it's, it has to do with the ego. So the ego is like, uh, it's like our association to our body. That's the whole reason why my name is three eyes um, or my name is Sergio. You know, I go by Sergio and like, that's my government name. So the ego is what the whole reason that we're using language right now. And the whole reason that you're interpreting these, these words when they're just like mumbles and vibrations, but it's through like our social programming and the ego that we're able to just act as humans. And once you do psychedelics, you remove the ego. And that's what a lot of people get scared about is like removing those social constructs and who they think they are because people generally have like a good feeling, like somebody might be confident. And then once they get to that ego death stage, they just lose all their confidence, you know, like their whole world gets flipped upside down. And that's what psychedelics is doing. It's like, you're, you're removing all the brainwashing that you've been under your whole life. And you're, you're seeing life from like a new perspective, kind of like from, uh, from like a blank slate and it's just it's yeah. the most it's the most astounding thing ever like how just how psychedelics can bring forth the states that they do yeah and speaking yeah. of speaking of a whole new perspective i've never seen a cowboy in a tracksuit but here he is bird dog what's going on how are you welcome to the show <laughs> yeah howdy Greetings. What's going on? <laughs> not much, not much. We uh we we know you from our, our episode of Esoteric America episode uh seven where we looked at Cartersville, Georgia and the greater North Georgia, uh eastern Tennessee area. It was really fascinating. So pleasure to have you here, dude. And wanna introduce yourself, let people know about your YouTube channel and whatnot. Oh, absolutely. If you guys uh you know, check out my YouTube. I do it for free. I do it for the love. And I mix uh, esoteric, all the esoteric into crypto to use it as utility and practicality so that we can benefit from it, not only on all the spiritual levels and inner, inner um, space, but just I, we need this matrix money. So that's what I specialize in. So if you guys want to join, I do it for the love. That And then my real currency is energy, you know, just give it, give and take and keep the energy flowing. But, uh, can I chime in on uh I came in because I'm I'm kinda I'm coming in a little hot on uh, secret societies. Oh. I'm not big on 
we got some some final thoughts on the Ryan Burns interview. Okay, all right, all right. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I'm not big on secret societies, man. Um, using an analogy of like your your uh, you know disciples hiding from the Romans because you know you'll get killed. That's a whole nother. That's you can't claim you're doing this to hide from persecution when all the G men own everything. They're the Vatican and they took over everything and they want to act like we're so noble. We need to hide this, this knowledge and no, they lie. They steal, they fraud, they hurt, they harm people. No, we're, Oh no, we can't tell you cause you can't handle it. Juan. It's like, no, we're shit. We're out here. This whole show is about, you know, on uncovering the secrets for the people in the hidden knowledge. So the yeah, I like can... this cowboy, dude. I don't know where you fucking got this guy out from. What? <laughs> Where's he brought his ass out from? Rob, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob has his hand up. Rob, you got some thoughts on what uh, Bird Dog just hit us with? Yeah. <laughs> you can look at it from another angle, though. What if everyone's just so fucking stupid, right? And they're just so incompetent. And the only way to wake them up is to do such stupid shit that's so evil that you can't even imagine it being that. And then they do it just so you wake up. I'm not saying it's right. But if Dude, you had a kids, bad childhood, homie. No, no, I, counterpoint. I, <laughs> I got a counterpoint. Can I finish my sentence? <laughs> oh, I, I apologize. Yes. I'm sorry. All I'm saying is I don't agree with the method there could be something to that idea mm. as perverted as it is. I'm not agreeing with it. I, I need a sock. So when Rob talks, I could have like a sock puppet. With like, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Rob. Uh, Rob, I want you to have a spiritual awakening. I'm going to make your life so difficult so that you force you to have a spiritual awakening. And you say, well, no, I didn't ask for this. Well, don't worry about it. I'm doing what's best for you. Well, you go, no, thank you. I go, well, too bad. I'm doing it anyway. I'm, I'm going to enslave you, impoverish you, make you unhealthy, make you eat garbage, just so you can have a spiritual awakening. Aren't you supposed to do something about it to correct Bro, it for yourself? That's I'm not Stockholm syndrome, dude. That's Stockholm them. syndrome, dude. I don't agree with them. I don't agree with the action. But it's a possible thought and theory by a sick, perverted group of people. So why would you listen to them? <laughs> Rob, guys, You're Rob's not, just being the devil's right. advocate. <laughs> I'm not agreeing with that as an action. I'm saying they could potentially think that to themselves as a righteous, noble action, as wrong as it is. Right, right. They sound like losers, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, don't defend I'm not them. But why would I listen to a fucking loser? God damn it. <laughs> why does everyone listen to him? Everyone's in their fucking house for two weeks to flatten the curve that turns into two fucking years. You all listen to him. The goal, the goal is to enslave. Okay, boil it down. The Brought reason to they you do by this, Pfizer. Exactly. It's to help you, like, get out of here. Um, it's to enslave you and eventually genocide you. What if your perception's wrong? What if your perception is, holy shit, these motherfuckers woke me up. We got to fucking fix this and make a better society for each other. I'm not buying it. The be- I mean, he's got a point. You know, capitalism says the best hammer, you know, wins. You know what I'm saying? But also at the same time, like, you know, you, you are sticking up for a group of people that seem to run I'm the not way. sticking up for them. Kid. That's where you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. <laughs> the action's wrong. Whatever, dude. The thought what, may be the process. Whatever. whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying, or am I not saying it clearly enough to you? No, we get you. You're you're defending the lizard class. Hey, I just want to point out. Lizard class, we did it. I just want to point out. I just want to point out that Rob is not defending anyone. And Chris, yesterday, Rob told me that you're his favorite parson on Illuminati Confirmed. So just think about that. Anyways, we're back here with three triple I. And I just want to know, three triple I, do you sure. think that uh, the, the, that maybe uh, if the elites were doing psychedelics, they would just chill out and not enslave us? Do you think it's that simple that they would have an awakening, or do you think maybe that they're they're interested in uh, other psychedelics like adrenochrome or a weird homunculus <laughs> shit? 
Uh, that's a great question. I honestly think that uh, there's a there's a left and a right side of the brain, and there's a good and a bad side. It's called duality. Um, that's the whole reason why I hear that. Um, what is it? The Aztecs they used to murder like seventy thousand people in the weekend, and they used to do it for their god and all that, you know. And they would be on psychedelics. So I feel like it's like a gun. You could use it for good or evil. Um, and you've heard of like evil shamans doing horrible things, you know, and that's just like, Mm. and I get it too. So there's like a, that energy, there's that energy, Carl Jung calls it the shadow. Um, and it just, it's in everybody, you know, it's just, we have a choice whether to identify with the shadow or to go towards the light, you know? Mm. Mm. Right. And it seems like maybe they're programmed to, uh, to not you know, integrate that light into their lifestyle from a young age, which makes them primed and ready to take over uh, their father or grandfather's business and continue the the line of control. But uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe in a higher order metaphysical way, they're fulfilling the same purpose that a wolf does when it kills a deer. I think that's really what uh, Rob is arguing. It's not that, you know, a wolf killing a deer is an evil act that needs to be stopped. It's, yeah, the wolf can decimate all the deer if they're left unchecked. But, uh, you know, for the most part, if the deer are unchecked, then, you know, the whole system breaks down. So you need the wolf coming in and causing bloodshed. Rob, you have your hand up. It's also MK Ultra. I think that MK Ultra has a lot to do with it. Um, these families are like corrupt, and mm. they have like a bloodline um, that's been going on for like hundreds of years. Right. So they already know like the brainwashing tactics and how they're going to raise the next generation. Um, I think <clears throat> psychedelics might have something to do with it in that brainwashing stage. Mm. Um, it could just be like you training a dog to like you know do any sort of trick. You're just training this next generation to to be evil and stuff, you know? Mm. Fuck yeah, dude. This guy fucking gets it, dude. So, <laughs> just listen to this fucking dude. Just record this guy and just listen to it later, dude. Well, we're recording it. That's what the podcast is. <laughs> Thank, uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. One. I mean, yeah. Salute to... What, what's his... Oh, I'm sorry. Three Eyes? Three Eyes. Yeah, three eyes. I like that name. Thanks. That's, all, that's beautiful, man. Um, Thank you. Generating a scarcity mentality is not the way. Right. Right. And, um, I, you know, I don't think anyone here has a scarcity mentality. Let's be honest, you know. Oh, I know not here, but we know the lizard class, they generate. That's what their whole, well, that's what their thing is to. Um, it's to impose that make, on, on, on their, their subservience. Yeah. Well, but then. In, also called economics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Juan, your thoughts? These fucking post shows with different people and different perspectives are fucking great. Like, I just like sitting back. I like I want to let them talk because they're all saying some really crazy, coherent shit, right? How how Chris is saying it's it's everything is streamlined, which that's a skill in itself to be able to take these concepts and really put them out to in a digestible form for people. Dude, elevator pitch, bro. We not one point. No offense, Mark. You know what I'm saying? Elevator pitch me, bro. <laughs> me? About You're what? You're 1.5 mark, dude. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I'm not. What am I pitching you on? You seriously don't see the fucking connection I just made? I El- Elohim? Elohim? Elevator pitch? I said that you earlier. You take a long time to say shit. 1.5 speed. 1.5 mark. You one point, got to go fast. Speed it up. You know what I mean? We got to get there. You know, right. we're on the 16th floor. We're only going to the 20th fucking floor, dude. <laughs> do you know yeah. what an elevator pitch is get to the point get to, get the, to point. the fucking point dog okay nah but Mark's style is cool though all right but what thank thank you and but what was the <laughs> point that i i'm just failing to see what point you're pushing me to make you got you got to understand this shit quicker got to be able to spit it out fast that's an elevator pitch that's it remember that's he's the, the oldest one here uh, mark so he's no, i am actually right. Oh, yeah, well, well, Rob is now, but Rob is now. Chris is the oldest co-host on this show, and uh, it yeah. shows. We got to get you some sh- shilajit, Chris. It's good for uh, your cognitive some CBD functions. at night so you can relax, bro. Got to get you some shilajit. It grows in the Himalayan mountains. It helps cognitive functions. Rob, you could probably what? use some, too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> 
anyways. Sometimes I just like when people just spit it out. That's all. Mm. Well, I, agree. I, I can't. Like, I mean, listen, three eyes has a knack for it. What do you want? I mean, put, if you put me on the, the comparison with, with the, all these great guests we have, sure. I talk slow. Sure. I make mistakes. Oh. Sure. I don't get to the point. Sure. <laughs> Prosser. No, it's, it's all good, Mark. It's, it's the weed, right? So you're talking in the Matrix Brothers. All right. Listen. In the baby no, no, powder, no, no, no. bro. You know, it's no. all good, dude. <laughs> listen. I'm actually learning to slow down. Yeah. I'm learning to slow down, actually. Yeah. yeah. Pauls in between sentences. I usually, I used to go rapid fire because I'm, you know, I'm rant central. And I'm a bah, 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 and I don't let anyone else jump in. And I'm starting to pause in between sentences. So I get the, I'm starting to kind of, I'm trying to like mellow out a little bit, you know. Mm, yeah. it, one of the hardest things I've ever had to learn, learn to do is stop and listen to somebody else. You know, yeah, listening is something I've been working on. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah. The problem is that some people fucking make you dumber by listening to them. So you got to <laughs> be able to decipher who you're going to listen to. You can't just listen to anybody either. You know what I mean? Because. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. If we listen to today's guest, he'll have you believing that secret societies are good. Ooh. It's about the great work. But hey, shout out to Ryan. He's a good sport about it. And I think it was a, a good episode. And, it, and okay. dude, like, I didn't mean any disrespect by that shit. I'm just saying, like, if I understand this concept of the great work, I've looked at this thing from a lot of angles for a long time, right? And that's the basic concept. I understand that. So now, with that being said, I couldn't wait for somebody to step in it, essentially, because. What the fuck, bro? If that's the great work, why y'all dickheads then? Yeah. Fill me yeah. the fuck in. Mm. Here's the difference, man. The Our great work, our tribes, our various tribes that are really just one tribe, we share with each other how to grow the best food, how to prosper, how to be the most healthy. Here's some great information. Here's some beautiful speculation on history. Here's what may happen after you die with energy and all that, like we are an open book and we want to empower others. That's the difference between this tribe. We wish to empower others, not, not steal their illusion, depress others to, you know, and go, all right. Mm. Yeah. It's a problem, Chris. Uh, Chris. It's a problem with well, these people. A lot of and people feel, feel disenfranchised and then they join a thing like a group or a lodge and now they're, you know, in the know. They're better yeah, than dude, the average is person. This, what That's comes the first, feeling, the right? Whoa, wait, 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 wait. What comes first, the chicken or the fucking egg? You feel Ooh. disfranchised, so you get a shit life, or what? You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, what happens to you shit life, but you're in the best mood? Right. 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 Those are the hardest to program. The ones that can, you know, decipher their reality. So uh, I, those are the people that they want to indoctrinate the most because they can break out of the system. Like you're saying it's all about mindset because if we perceive certain things, we create our own reality. Joan of Arc took over fucking Europe because your voice she was a schizophrenic, bro. 100%. So. And yeah, because you, have 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 a good one. you didn't have to have a, 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 a bad life. It's based on these people propagating it. It's kind of like how Ill certain illnesses didn't exist until they put up radio towers. Oh. Right. And then they go, well, now we have medicine for you. It's like, well, no, uh, we would have been fine without radio towers healthy. We would have been fine on, you know, living a more natural life. But now we have a bad life. And, you know, so, yeah, Chris, Chris is right. What came first? So if you feel disenfranchised now, that's because it's been set up this way for, you know, decades. It's, it's been Had incrementally it. this way. It's what yeah. we were talking about, the rats, Chris, before the show. Are you putting enough rats in a, in one place? They all start I feel to like people need to get mad, dude. We need to get mad. Like, that's really your angry face, bro. Well, no, dude, like, for real, like, fuck that. Like, do you know that we live on planet paradise? Like, dude, everything you could ever, you, you know how good fishing is? It's, like, so fun. It's like you're out, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so much shit that is dope. You know what's yeah, like to take that. mushrooms and go walk around the mountains? It's dumb, dude. Yeah, this realization and shit. If this realm was a few feet further away from the sun, we might not even be here, bro. Or or, or shifted a certain you degree. Just, you just you just jack the wheel, bro. You just jack the wheel. <laughs> it's to me, bro. It's planet paradise. We just need to fuck off and be decent towards each other. The great work or whatever the fuck. And yo, it's that real simple work. 
That is the great work. You being the best you can and being the best of the person next to you so you, you cast the shadow you want to see. Mm. That's the great work. But it's you been being inverted. the best you can be so that everyone else wants to be like you. And it's been inverted so that those lodges that used to function mm -hmm. teaching people that now are just making one person great, whoever's at the top of the hierarchy. Bro, back in the day, you used to, people used to be hard as fucking nails. You know what I mean? Come for my shit. I'll fuck you up, you know? Mentality. You know what I mean? All the time, every day. What's up? But those are also the coolest dudes. They just want to, like, drink beers and hang out. Until you cross that fucking line, dude. And I just feel like we're becoming puss. And yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, you know, with the, uh, common, like, um, soy boy type mentalities of, um, not, not standing up. Like when good men do nothing, e evil prevails. Like we, we can probably count on a thousand quotes that go, dude, enough's enough. No, to these weak ass paper tigers, right? But the problem is, if you look around, trust me, I'm on your level, Chris. I'm, I'm actually, I don't, I've, I've been on some rants where I'm like, let's go. But uh, <laughs> we're such a, we're such a minority, dude. Like we're, if you look around, the um the mission has been successful to suppress yeah. people's energy. Yeah. It's been successful. Yeah. They don't know history. They don't know anything. And you go, let's go look at this. Look at these um, politicians or whoever that are evil. Let's do something about it. You're like, Oh my gosh, I don't know. You know, I got to go to work. So I mean, I got, you know, I got my shows tonight. Totally. totally. I get it. And, like, and, totally and I'm so powerless. And then the big thing is what can I do? I'm just one person said seven billion people <laughs> you know i'll I'm tell you what man bro. i'll tell you what though during covid look at how many people mobilized to go just destroy shit in the streets and none of them got covid <laughs> but they all mobilized to fucking break the fucking apple store oh yeah true so just imagine if we all got together and did good dude that's what i'm saying it needs to be knowledge applied it's so fucking yeah. simple it is. It's and conquer. Well, the next looting season, man. I'm go I'm I'm going shopping, dude. The next loot, <laughs> loot season, <laughs> I can use some new stuff. No, I'm just playing. Yeah. But the only place I want to go loot is Lamborghini. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, bro, you know what these lethal injections, man. Just tell them leave the keys in the in the Lambo, man. They'll be. It'll be available. Yo, can I play a voicemail that Chris left me the other day? Can I play that voicemail you left me, Chris? Yeah. I have no idea what I said. Let's yeah, let's let's wrap up with that. We got we've had a quite a long show here. We're past the two hour mark. Let's hear let me this know, and let me know if you guys hear this. Dude, everything Yo, I do, uh, ever yep, yep, we hear it. We hear it. All right, so this is a voicemail that Chris left me the <laughs> other day. <laughs> Check it out. Yo, Ron John, I forgot to tell you we were talking earlier, but there's this um, commercial that keeps coming up whenever I'm watching internet stuff, YouTube's or whatever. Um, but it's a Liberty, uh, Liberty, Liberty, Liberty you know, insurance, that shit, mutual, I guess it is. Um, and there's a bird that has like a robot voice. I don't know if you've seen that one. But it keeps coming up on my thing, and I thought you'd. Get a what? giggle, giggle out of that <laughs> fucking bitch ass motherfucker. Um, anyways, hope you're uh, doing good and uh, not floating downstream. Give me a call, buddy. Oh, <laughs> how sweet. Checking in during Hurricane Ian. We were all worried about Juan a few days ago. He's okay. Yeah, I'm good, bro. That, that was hilarious. I was like, what is the it's a robot <laughs> bird, dude? It's a robot <laughs> bird. Where? In a commercial? <laughs> In the fucking, like I said, dude, it's in a fucking Liberty, Liberty, Liberty Mutual commercial. And the guy's sitting in front of the Statue of Liberty. He's got a yellow table out. And there's a bird on the shit. And there's a, a, a seagull. And the seagull, he's got a pie or something like that. And he's got a seagull in front of him. Like maybe the seagull's trying to eat the pie or something. But it, it, it's, a, it's using a robot voice. It's like, yo, like, but it's in like, you know what I mean? Through a robot. Yeah. I don't know. Google the shit. Dude. It like, sounds like Chris did some DMT. Speaking of that, three triple I. You ever seen the DMT elves or for that matter, a DMT machine robot seagull? <laughs> Not a seagull, but I've definitely seen uh, I'm some trip to me. <laughs> You've seen the elves. Yeah, and I've seen some Alex Gray stuff that he's painted. 
Wait, oh, some of that so when you see the machine elves, because there's someone in the chat who seems to think they're all demonic. Um, he said, oh, he's already gone, but he said Jesus is coming for his saints soon. Don't get left behind. Um, <laughs> so we, we might be able to guess where he's coming from, but I, I don't disagree with that. Who knows? Uh, but anyways, what do you think about machine elves? Are they like you know, components of the universe? Are they good beings? Are they evil demonic beings? What's the scoop? That's a hard question. That's what Maps is trying to figure out right now. Uh, Maps is like uh, mapping out the DMT world. Yeah, and they're they trying to like make contact. They don't have the best uh, track the record. Stuff. That group there. I don't know. Some people seem to be pretty sketched out about Maps. But, yeah, but uh, Mark, what he's saying is that people come back with the same response, like same. Yeah, oh no, I get it. Map it, map it out, which is odd with the name of the place. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, and not just that one. There's like a another one, like I think it's in London or something like that. Um, but Alex Jones talks about it. He says how they're fucking mapping out the DMT realm. But honestly, I don't think that they're that bad. Um, personally, I've made contact with them. We've I've seen them. They just they're just there, you know. They're just a part of the experience. I think it it might be something internal. I think it's just myself, you know. Like I'm just trying to like entertain myself. So my perspective is that we're all the same person and, and we're all the same consciousness. We're just in different bodies. So. <clears throat> Everything is just an extension of myself and my consciousness. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, we're, we're just, we're all God having a human experience. But uh, God is looking at the earth, at his creation through each and every one of us, through all the insects and all the birds and all the animals and everything. Uh, God is having an experience through everything, you know, and like all the plants. Mm. Yeah. It's, so, almost, my bad, it's almost um, like what, what they say about walking in somebody else's shoes. You know what I mean? Like weird. Yeah, it's like it's empathy on a thousand percent, you know, like it, you, you really do get to see life like one, once you do have an ego death and and it depends how far you leave your body. You're able to look outside of the eyes of other peoples and you're able to see how um, how life, how probably you affected somebody else through their eyes and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just it's really crazy. It's really it's pretty fucking intense what happens on psychedelics. Mm, hey, yeah. three, are you able to astral project? Have you ever um, done that? Are you capable of that? I've done it in a float tank. I yeah. Bro, Rob's done it in a float tank. That's sick. I want to try a float tank. Um, but, but, yeah, go, have, um, but go blasted. I did. I was on like 500 milligrams of THC edibles. <laughs> nice. What about you, That's three? Good. Um, yeah, I've, I've actually projected a lot, mostly on acid. Um, but shrooms, when I do like above five grams, I start to get in that realm. So what I think it is, it's that hemi sink. Um, what Robert Monroe talks about at, at the, at whatever it is. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Yeah. So that's what's happening. You start to hear like a, a low vibration in your head. Well, this is at least my experience. Um, I start to hear like a vibration in my head or like a slight ring. And then I start to I start to follow it. Like I just start to go into like a meditative trance, almost like sleep. And then that's when I can feel myself rising out of my body. And it feels like I'm connecting to like a different frequency. It, I, I believe it might be the Schumann resonance that our brain is connecting to. So they say that earth is emitting a certain frequency. And scientists say that our brains are also emitting a certain frequency. So I feel like those frequencies match up once you're on psychedelics or once you meditate. And you're able to like travel around the earth and stuff. Hmm. But yeah, well, do, that... you know, do you know about this? The hemi sync stuff where they like because everything resin has a, a, a vibration, Monroe. so they 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 off kilter them in in stereo speakers in your yeah in your ears yeah, and it's supposed okay, to create a third part like a third play theta state. It's really it's interesting. Just yeah. Hum you get yeah. I think we're able to do that naturally. Like that's what sleep is. I think sleep is like the, <clears throat> is the ultimate form of ego death because <clears throat> we're basically just leaving our bodies there defenseless, ready for something to attack it. And once you're sleeping, uh, that's when your, your soul is like creating like a whole nother universe inside your brain. It's like, you're having these experiences that feel like real life. And I think, uh, we're able to hemi sync naturally, but like psychedelics just helps boost that hemi sync. Damn. Well, shoot. Deep. This has been a deep episode. We got takes from all across the country here, from Utah down to Georgia, up here the in Secret CT. Society lovers. 
We got secret society lovers, secret society dislovers, secret society uh, participants, all sorts of strange uh, episode uh, material here. This has been a great episode. Dude, hold on. Before you go any further, this fucking, I'm on my Googles, dude, and there is there is all kinds of Liberty Mutual fucking ads, but none with the bird I'm talking about. Oh, here we go. Oh, Mandela. <laughs> we have the message, bro. Uh, we have Chris. the message. <laughs> it's time wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. Is anybody on this panel from the East? Juan and Mark here excluded. Anybody else on this panel from the East Coast? Yes. Yeah, I am. So Have you heard that. of the uh, Black Tom explosion? What? Never heard of it, right? Exactly. Was that, was that when they blew up Wall Street in like the 1600s, 1916 nope. or something? Nope. No. You never, you're from the East Coast, so you never heard of the Black I Tom explosion, right? Is that it's when? Me, but I don't remember what it is. Is that when? I swear to God, I heard of it. Is that when it Tom us, Cruise it got is... us into World War II? It's the first uh, terrorist attack on American soil. Yada 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 yada. We never heard of it, right? We never heard of it. We grew up in East Coast. I did too. Connecticut and Pennsylvania, yeah. New York. Never heard of it. No, I've heard of it. It's, I think Sam actually did an episode on it in it's 1916 in New York Harbor. That's what I just said. <laughs> yeah. Rob was right. I was going to say uh, we were talking about when they... Fuck, Chris. Motherfucker. I, I thought you were talking about when they blew up the Tom Cruise blackface uh, no, footage. No, they, they blew up the Wall Street in 1916. You're, you're, both, you're both off because, Mark, you didn't get done reading the thing. I, it says, explosions which occurred on July 30th, 1916 in New York Harbor killed four people and destroyed some 20... Did you say New York Harbor or did you say Wall Street? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I made a mistake. It's all right. It's all right. We're all here to have fun. Chris is the only person who's making it it's all. It's fucking crazy, dude. We're all here to learn. It's all good. Yeah, it's Jer fucking. Bananas. This was in Jersey. This... What does this have to do with anything, Chris? Mandela effect. Mandela effect. Yeah. Oh, on, because dude. we haven't heard of it. This doesn't make it a Mandela effect. Because of the bird, Mark. Pay attention, Doc. <laughs> yeah, but that's dude, a I'm Mandela effect. I'm a Berenstein <laughs> bear. <laughs> Yeah, and I saw that stupid the movie with uh, Shazam. <laughs> no, with, uh, with his face. Oh, you've seen Shazam? I did. I saw it in the fucking movie theater with with uh, <laughs> with uh, the a comedian named Sinbad. 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 Oh yeah, huh. brilliant, brilliant yeah. actor. Fucking movies in the theater. Mm. Okay, there you go. Well, that's a great place to stop the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. For tuning Emotional. in, the live stream number two will be back, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after that. And for everybody who is waiting for Esoteric America, those are now going to premiere on Thursdays. So just loud and clear, uh, that's going to be happening on Thursdays from now on. And Juan and Chris and I will be back next Thursday for everybody who signed up on the Patreon. So sign up on the Patreon, you'll get the first 40 minutes of this conversation that was cut out because of the live stream fumble. And then, uh, and then you'll get all the other bonus content that we do. And moving forward, we, we might cut the live stream, uh, around the second hour with guests like bird dog, triple I three, triple I Rob, whoever's in the YouTube chat. So participate in the live stream each week and you might find yourself right here on the show with us. Uh, but as for me, I got to go to sleep cause Rob's going to pay me to uh, work with him tomorrow morning. Right, Rob? Yes, sir. All right. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Juan, Chris, any final thoughts? Check out my journal, the occultist Monday, my website, the one on podcast.com. Follow cool. me on there. This cool. fucking great guys. I really enjoyed this. Cool. Yeah, big, yo, big shout out to these fucking dudes, Bird Dog and Three Eyes and Robert. Man, you guys are fucking rad. I don't know about our guest; he seems a bit wonky. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yo, much, much love, everyone. Chris, I love your energy, man. Juan, you crushed it the other day. You and you and uh, homie Romy on um the uh, Interverse. You guys were crushing it. If you guys are. Um, I'm in, uh, my, my family thinks I'm crazy. Telegram, check out my YouTube. You can look up this, my name or bird dog 45. I have a telegram too. I'm starting my own secret society. The only 
requirement is you need to bring a lizard person court. Illuminati that's confirmed. The <laughs> that's the only requirement. All right. All well, right. Much love. Well, Thank shit. You. Send that link into the Telegram chat. Everybody, go to myfamilythinksomecrazy dot com. You get the Telegram link there, and then you'll see Bird Dog's link as well. Uh, until next time. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, have a great moment wherever you are, confirmed in the Illuminati. Oh, yeah.